the Parkinson's disease treatment versus schizophrenia and then sort of, I know someone meant, like we were talking about things that can cause Parkinsonism, right? So if someone has schizophrenia and is on dopamine depleting drugs for a long period of time, after a while, they can look like they have Parkinson's. They do not have Parkinson's disease. They have Parkinsonism from their antipsychotic medications. So if I go through this, right, just, you do have to know these, unfortunately, the four places of, of dopamine pathways in the brain. So mesolimbic, mesocortical, we talked about the limbic system, right? Emotions, sort of uh, really vivid sort of ways of interacting with the world. In schizophrenia, I have way too much dopamine in the mesolimbic pathway, right? So those are my positive symptoms of schizophrenia. I tend to have less dopamine in the mesocortical, so sort of the areas that require dopamine of my cortex, my thinking. So those kind of affect the negative symptoms of my schizophrenia. Nigrostriatal is from the substantia nigra to the striatum or the basal ganglia. So that's not really affected in schizophrenia on the right, but is affected in Parkinson's. That's sort of the primary issue. And then tuberoinfundibular is the dopamine to the pituitary, which I think we maybe have you know, learned in some of the side effects, right? So what is, if someone would put in the chat, what is dopamine's effect on the pituitary gland? Inhibit prolactin, awesome. Yeah. So a couple of the clinical correlates of that um, that we'll go through here and then I'll, I'll maybe add one more. So if I treat Parkinson's disease, right, I give someone too much dopamine. I kind of worry about giving them visual hallucinations, right, sort of making them look like they have the hallucinations of schizophrenia. I can help their thinking a little bit. I don't really think of that. And my goal is sort of to make this neutral, right? I want sort of just normal movements at the nigrostriatal pathway. I don't really think of any symptoms of too much inhibition of prolactin here. Right, so that chart becomes kind of simple. If I go over to the schizophrenia chart, which is really not the content of today's talk, but I think really helpful to go through in this context, if I block dopamine, I tend to really improve the symptoms of hallucinations. Absolutely. It doesn't really help me at all with some of the negative symptoms of schizophrenia, which is typical, right? So those are the hardest to treat. It can, induce a Parkinsonism, right? So the same pathology. And then if we lower dopamine, that means we raise prolactin and we can get things like galactorrhea, right? So that can be some of the side effects that we see there. The other clinical correlate to this pathway, right? If you have someone who has a pituitary adenoma that produce, produces prolactin, you treat them with dopamine drugs, right? carbergoline, bromocryptine, primapexol, direct dopamine agonists, the same ones we use for Parkinson's to inhibit the prolactin production from their tumor.